Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another Prophecy in the News daily update, and this is being recorded on May 11th for release on Monday, May 14th. And I'm going to answer uh, some email today, uh, an email specifically from Steve N. And Steve, you, you asked a very good question. Steve writes this, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed your interview with Doug Hamp. As a result, I have begun to listen to Doug Hamp's radio program, according to Scripture, on the Liberty Broadcast Network. Doug's program is one which answers biblical questions from listeners by phone during the broadcast. And then Steve says, I began to notice one question was recurring and deeply troubling. The callers stated that they have been taught and shown in Scripture that the current Jewish population in the state of Israel are not true Jews. One of the passages the callers used was in Romans chapter 9, and I'll read that. The callers who uh, essentially were supporting the idea that uh, today's Jews back in Israel are not really Jews at all, uh, go to uh, Romans 9 chapter 6, uh, in which Paul is talking about uh, the Jews having fallen away from true worship. In fact, I'm going to read all of chapter, or at least the beginning verses of chapter 9 in Romans, where Paul writes, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish myself that were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. And so with that introduction to chapter 9, Paul is lamenting the fact that his brethren uh, among the Jews have forsaken uh, the true worship of the Lord God and have failed to recognize the coming of their Messiah. Now the next verse, it talks about Israel. <clears throat> And, and this would be verse 6, Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, neither uh, because they are in the seed of Abraham are they called children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Now, some would use that uh, as a proof that when Israel was dispersed, Israel was lost forever, <clears throat> and that, that uh, this statement, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. And the verse before, they are not all Israel which are in Israel. Now, some use that as a proof uh, text saying that the people who have come back to Israel are not Israelites. They are not of uh, Jewish stock. And in fact, there is a long theory which has been enunciated in several books that are on the market that concerning a group called the Khazars out of uh, uh, the steppes of Western uh, Russia and Eastern Europe. And supposedly the Khazars <coughs> took over and became the ruling factions of the Jews, particularly the Ashkenazic Jews in uh, Eastern Europe. And so when they came back at, to Israel after World War II, it wasn't really Jews coming back, it was Khazars. I reject that on several levels. <clears throat> Among them, uh, common sense. Uh, Adolf Hitler and the National Socialist Party in Germany certainly believed that the Jews were the Jews, and they believed that their uh, mandate for what they call the final solution was to wipe out the Jews once and for all forever. And they had no trouble at all identifying the Jews. I believe that they were led by uh, the one behind the scenes, Satan. Now the Sephardic Jews uh, in Western Europe uh, are also of Jewish stock. And after World War II, the Ashkenazic Jews from Eastern Europe, the Sephardic Jews from Western Europe, all came back to Israel. They are there today. And here's something fascinating. 
they have done DNA testing on those who have returned to Israel, and they have established what uh, is called in, in uh, DNA parlance haplogroup K. And I'm reading here, haplogroup K appears in West Eurasia, North Africa, South Asia, populations with such an ancestry. Uh, approximately 32% of the people with Ashkenazic Jewish ancestry are in haplogroup A or K. Now, uh, DNA testing has proven that the vast majority of the genotype that comes back from Europe to Israel has the haplogroup K uh, stamp on it. This particular haplogroup is identified with the genealogy of the Middle East. In other words, the area that we would call Jordan, Syria, uh, and on over to the Persian Gulf. Middle Eastern genotypes, and these would be the people out of whom came the 12 tribes. Uh, we have here a, a report <clears throat> that was uh, printed by the New York Times May 14th, 2002, so it's an old report, but it speaks of two studies, uh, one by Dr. Michael Hammer, University of Arizona, uh, showing an analysis of the male or Y chromosome uh, that Jewish men from seven communities were related to one another and to present-day Palestinian and Syrian populations. By the way, did you know that the Jews never really left the Holy Land totally? There, were, there was always a residual number of Jews in the Holy Land, and, and that goes from A.D. 70 to the present. There's always been a Jewish population there. It's a very simple matter to test their DNA against the DNA of returning Jews. And you discover that not only in the haplogroup K faction, but also in the male Y chromosome, uh, and, and again, in, the, in this study, which took place back in 2002, the Jewish men from seven communities were re related not only to each other, uh, but to present-day Palestinian and Syrian populations, linking the Jews of the diaspora with the Jews who remained behind. And they write, in ancient Israel, the Jewish priesthood was handed from father to son, but at some time from 200 B.C. to A.D. 500, the Jewish status came to be defined by the maternal uh, descent. <clears throat> and they go on then to talk about uh, the mitochondrial DNA, that is from the mother's side, and they've done the same sort of testing uh, on the maternal mitochondrial DNA, and they have matched the DNA of residual populations in uh, Eurasia with those who went to Europe and then returned after World War II, and they find the same markers in both groups. So the people who came back are Jews. Now, to go back to the biblical uh, quote that uh, Steve writes about, uh, Paul writes about a group <clears throat> here, verse 4, who are Israelites to whom a per, uh, pertaineth the adoption, the glory, the covenants, <clears throat> and the giving of the law, the service of God, the promises. He goes on then to define those people <clears throat> as the faithful, not merely the genetic. He says, not as though the word of God has ta taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. In other words, not all Israelites, not all Jews will come to faith. Some will not. And it is by faith that one is saved. Uh, he, say, he concludes, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. In other words, he says, they're not children just because they are genetically descended from Abraham. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Children of the flesh would be Jewish descendants from Abraham, who are still there. And Paul says that just because they are children of the flesh from Abraham, they won't necessarily be saved. But the children of promise are counted for the seed of Abraham. What does that mean? Well, they are the, the Jews who, by faith, have accepted the promise of the fathers. God knows who they are. They're coming back to the land. And by faith, one day, they will receive the promise made to Abraham. 
I have to conclude <clears throat> with this statement from Romans eleven twelve. 12. Now, if the fall of them, that is the Jews, be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Paul says, you know, the Gentiles were blessed because of the fact that the Jews fell in their faith and were dispersed. Uh, and so that the house of God could be uh, essentially uh, planted all over the world and not just in Israel. But he also carefully adds that when they come back to fullness, they will become the head of the nations. I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, Romans 11:25, lest you should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. I think we're just about to see the fullness of the Gentiles. Uh, I think we're just about to see the departure of the church and the blindness which has been upon the eyes of Israel will be taken away <clears throat> and then they'll have work to do after the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Those are Jews back in Israel right now. Steve, you know it and I know it. There are a lot of ways to answer the question. Hope this helped. Thanks for your email. And remember, keep looking up, everybody.